Hey, Evangel, it's good to see you this morning, March 22nd, 2020. And uh, welcome, welcome to this live stream, Church Online, Church Without Walls, as we're calling it. Hey, a couple things, too, that are kind of unusual this morning. Um, there's no one in the room, as I'm sure you're aware of, and you're all out there. And there's a lot of you out there, apparently, based on the stream last, last week, over almost 2,000 views, which is pretty cool. Um, the second thing is um, we're starting with a talk on Sunday mornings. We never do that. We always start with music and a coffee in hand. I do have that right here. And the third thing is I'm wearing a toque. I never wear a toque on Sunday morning. But I figure as you are probably wearing your jammies, <laughs> you've got your feet kicked up on the couch, you've probably got your bacon and eggs sitting on your lap, I figured the least I can do is be comfortable as well and wear, um, wear, my, wear, my, wear my toque and my Superman shirt. Special request of my granddaughter, Ember. There you go. Anyways, we are in some pretty crazy times. The landscape is definitely shifting in society, but not only in society and church world. We're just, we're seeing unprecedented things taking place around the globe and, um, even one week ago, from last week till to now, I was just um, talking with our, with our technician here, video technician, about the fact that last Sunday we were saying, hey, you know, we're going to do this for one week, um, Church Without Walls, but maybe next week we'll be back in. And now we're in a situation where, according to some top officials in Canada, listening to them last night, we may be in this kind of scenario for, for months ahead as we battle with the, um, the corona outbreak. So... This is, this is really crazy, but not without a heads up. And I think it's crazy for us as a church and for me, for Sarah and I, to reflect on how God has been speaking to us over the last number of months. And so I shared a bit about that last, last, last week. And, and the first was back in December, we were doing some listening prayer and just having some time to retreat. And we were asking Jesus questions about the next year coming up. And we literally felt him say to us, now, when I say say to us, we didn't hear an audible voice, but we sensed as we were waiting before his presence, we sensed that he was saying that we needed just to cancel any holidays and trips for 2020. And the reaction from both Sarah and I, because we like getting out of town, especially around this time of year, right? When in Fort St. John, it's kind of cold and it's been a long winter and you just want to escape somewhere hot. And so it was kind of strange that we would sense God saying that. He's never said that to us before in um, 17 years of living here in Fort St. John. But we literally went, okay, let's do it. So we went onto our calendars at that point. And this was December, and we just canceled trips. Just went, okay, we're not going to that. We're not going that. We're, we're going to stay home over the summer. And now, all of a sudden, we, we, we have so many times we've looked at each other and, and said, what on earth? Man, was that ever crazy how God kind of gave us a heads up on that. And there were other things, like we were thinking about going online already. Our, our staff was kind of tackling that, what that would look like logistically. My mentor, a guy named Ray Dirksen, whom I love, him and Fran, have poured into Sarah and I so much over the last five years. He's been saying for a long time, the church should be prepared for not having the main gathering on Sunday morning in terms of the big building and everybody coming together. I got to say, sometimes I thought he was kind of crazy, but here we are in a gathering uh, with no gathering and sort of a buildingless church. Um, and there were other things. One of the things I want to share with you today is a dream that God gave me. I, I believe God gave me February 1st, 2020, so almost two months ago, a Friday night. I woke up on Saturday morning and wrote this dream down, and I think it has profound, if I can use the word prophetic, um, significance for the season we're in now. And I'm going to share that at the close of this talk. And I think it's actually, it's a word for us today and um, it'll be kind of enlightening. So if you're just tagging into Evangel and you're like, oh my goodness, this guy's talking about dreams. It's not, I've, I've preached out of dreams before. So we believe God speaks through dreams. And I think you'll, you'll agree that this was a, this was a God dream, if ever there was one. So a couple quick announcements um, and then I'll get into a short preach, and, um, and then we'll carry on with our morning. So first of all, prayer summit tonight. Again, we'd hoped we could have a, an in-person prayer summit, but that's not going to be possible. So we're going to be online, Facebook Live, from 5 to 6 p.m. It's just going to be one hour, 
and um, we're gonna we're gonna push into some things. This is the first time we've actually taken a prayer summit outside the walls of Evangel, so that'll be kind of your chance. If you've never been to a prayer summit or you're thinking, what does Evangel do in prayer meetings? Well, you can kind of hook into this from the safety of your home and kind of see what we do. And I think you'll find that it's actually pretty cool. We have seen God do a crazy amount of things as we have prayed. And each year we have some big, we call them, we call them community prayer requests that we're praying for together as a house. And we have seen, I mean, Jesus do really, really crazy things as we have prayed into certain issues every single, every single year. And we've seen those things on a personal level. And I, I mentioned this on a, in a video this week that over the last three weeks of gatherings here at Evangel, we've seen God do so many cool things around healing people, um, encountering people, helping them deal with anxiety and fear. So we believe that God answers prayer. That's what I'm saying. And so tonight from 5 to 6 p.m., this is your chance. And if you're listening to this and you're from Fort St. John and maybe you don't even go to church, you're totally welcome to be a part of this. Just tag in. And um, I think you'll be really encouraged as we, as we pray together over our city. We're going to be praying for our, our medical um, staff and all those guys that are going to be hands-on as we walk through the next couple months right on the front lines. We're going to be praying over finances. I know there's a lot of stress with businesses and jobs and things like that. So we're going to really push in. And then at the back end of that hour, we're actually going to take live prayer requests. So you can actually punch something in to the, to the Facebook feed, the, the posts. Post something that you want us to pray into to specifically, and we're going to do our best to actually pray live into those things. So, so this is your chance to throw something on the floor, and we'll hit it together. And I, I just want to say it again. We have seen God do crazy things as we prayed, and we believe that's going to happen tonight. So that's the format for Prayer Summit tonight from 5 to 6. Uh, so just a couple housekeeping things really quick. If you have not um, got on Evangel's Facebook page, I'm swinging around a pink pen. Isn't this cool? Um, if you haven't got on Evangel's Facebook page, do it and like the page. You can do that now if you want. Like, like this live stream, post something in it, tell, tell us where he, that you're there, <laughs> say hi or whatever. Uh, and, and this is probably, if you've ever wanted to invite somebody to church, and tell somebody about church, this is probably the easiest invite you'll ever, you'll ever do. Simply share this live feed link onto your page, uh, your Facebook page, and others will see what's going on. So you can check in too, even if you're not here. Remember, the church is not this building that I'm standing in right now. The church is the people of Evangel. And so you are in right now, even if you're in your living room, in your bathrobe with a cup of coffee in your hands, you are in. So check yourself in on Evangel's Facebook page. The second thing is um, this live stream here. Uh, let's see here. We are live streaming on Facebook only this week. Next week we'll actually be live streaming on YouTube as well. So if you haven't had a chance to check out Evangel's YouTube channel, you should do that today. So it's Evangel Downtown. Just do a search in YouTube and you'll find our channel. Subscribe to the channel, get notifications, hit the notification bell. And uh, we're putting a lot of stuff up there, including every Sunday we'll actually have a worship set list that you can just, if you want to, you can just play those videos on Sunday morning. We've pre-selected actually this week three videos that seem really, really timely, three worship videos that seem timely for the, for the season that we're in. So I'm going to actually recommend that you do that after, the, after I talk here is, is to go onto that playlist and just throw it on your TV, crank the, crank the music and um, just have a time of loving on God, okay? So check out Evangel's YouTube channel, get subscribed there, and you, will, um, you won't regret that at all, and it'll keep you another way of keeping us connected. The third thing is the Zoom app. Now, it's Z-O-O-M, the Zoom app. If you haven't downloaded it onto your phone, then you should do that, because this is a, this is a way of moving forward for us as a church and collecting collaboratively. It's kind of like FaceTime, only you can actually bring multiple people into a conversation. So it's likely that midweek gatherings will go to that kind of a format. It's likely that youth gatherings, young adult gatherings, and any leadership kind of gatherings. Sarah and I continue to mentor leaders in our church. We're hoping to bring more people into that in this season. And that will all take place in the Zoom platform. So get that app if you haven't. Don't worry about writing all this stuff down because we're going to post all these links in the description on this post following the live feed, okay? Um, let's see. A 
If you have any issues about this live feed or you're at, you have a question around something involving an evangel or maybe it's about online giving, we're encouraging people to actually get, in, get online giving set up. Obviously, we're not passing a plate. We never pass a plate anyways, but um, on Sunday mornings, giving centers, they're pretty quiet right now. <laughs> I don't see any lineups, um, so we're, we're, trying to get, we're trying to push you and encourage you to go to online giving. Nothing that Evangel does is really not happening anymore. We're still functioning at full, um, full capacity, and so we, we, we want to encourage you to stay engaged on that level. If you have any questions about anything, you can actually text 250 Three three eight six. Again, that's two five zero seven eight five three three eight six. Operators are standing by, or should I say, operator. And if you have any issues, even about the live stream this morning, or you're, or you're, you're trying to find out how to get access the Church Without Walls guide, you can text that number, and somebody will respond right away. They're ready to respond to you. That would be the last thing I want to say is that we actually have a guide that is intended to be a companion to this live stream. So I'm not going to be too long here. I'm going to be another 20 minutes. And then we're actually encouraging you in your house to have a bit of a Sunday gathering, which will include a bit of worship, singing some songs. And um, if you happen to have a, an inst a, a vocalist and a guitar player in your house, then you can certainly go your own route on that. Or you can simply just go to the evangelist YouTube channel and um, and hook into the playlist called Sunday Morning Songs, March 22nd. It's actually dated as well. And then, uh, then in the guide, it will kind of lead you through a little bit of a discussion in your home with your family. This is such a good opportunity, man, to bring your kids into this journey and to actually uh, bring church into your home and, and what happens in the life of, of Evangel into your home. And then there's, there's sort of a guide around things to pray and even some listening prayer questions. So you can access that guide. If you're streaming from Evangel's website, then you can access it there. It's also posted in Evangel's Facebook page. And if you still can't find it, then you can text. Operators are standing by. Okay, let me just preach really quick. And I'm calling this the one-minute pause. And I think this is a season right now that... Um, we've been in a series called The True Face of Jesus, but we're just kind of tabling that for a bit. And I think it's a time to get really practical and to get really nuts and bolts. And if there's something I could do this week and inspire you towards is, is connecting with Jesus, meaningfully connecting with him. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just talk briefly out of Luke chapter 19. I'm going to read this text. And then I'm going to take you into something. I'm going to give you a tool that's really practical that I think will help you connect with God. If you don't have a relationship with God and you're like, I'm not a really religious person, this tool will, will actually help you deal with fear and anxiety and panic and all the things that are going on uh, in your life right now as you're contemplating the future, thinking about the present. Oh my goodness. Last night, Sarah and I just came off a 24-hour media, media fast. I highly recommend it. I think you should recapture the Sabbath and Friday night at sundown to Saturday night at sundown. No media, no news. Um, the only thing we did was we kept face, uh, FaceTime open so we could keep connected with our kids. We haven't seen our grandkids in two weeks. And um, this is, these are just, I mean, that's, that's stressing us out. So we came through the, the media fast. And then last night at about, I don't know, it was 9.30 or 10, Sarah's like, hey, should we kind of update the new, just see what's going on in the world? And so we pulled up Global News and watched a 20-minute segment. And uh, I, I just, we just literally turned to each other and went, Oh my goodness, we need to go back on another 24-hour me media fast. It's, it's, pretty, um, it's pretty alarming to see what's happening around the globe. By the way, if you think of it, we have about five evangel families that are trying to get back to Canada. And uh, just be thinking about them and praying for them as they make arrangements because it's not easy at this point even coming back to Canada. So uh, where was that here? So I want to give you a, a practical tool to help you deal with um, all the stuff that's going on. But more than that, my heart, obviously, is to, is to help you really connect to Jesus at, at, this, at this season and at this time. So Luke chapter 19 is a really cool story. You'll know it as the story of Zacchaeus. You know, if you remember the, the story of Zacchaeus, or maybe you remember the song in Sunday school, Zacchaeus was a wee little man and a wee little man was he. Zacchaeus climbed the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And so I'm going to read out of this story, and then we're going to do a wide angle look at it, and then I'm going to narrow into something that I want you to see. Okay, so it goes like this. 
And I'm reading from the message, the message translation. It says this, Then Jesus entered and walked through Jericho. There was a man there, and there, there was a man there, his name Zacchaeus, the head taxman and quite rich. He wanted desperately to see Jesus, but the crowd was in his way. He was a short man and couldn't see over the crowd, so he ran on ahead and climbed up in a sycamore tree so he could see Jesus when he came by. And I want just a, a first wide angle thought here. I, I think this is actually a prophetic picture for us, and I, I want you to, to receive it that way. But if I could just kind of go wide angle here, I think the description of Zacchaeus here is a really good description of the North American church and is a good description of North Americans, period, and, and how we are. Um, you can see a few things here. <clears throat> well, first of all, Zacchaeus was later on, it will say, son of Abraham. So he was a, he was a Jewish guy. Uh, to be a Jew in those days was, was, not just, was not just speaking of an ethnicity, but also religion. So he was a religious guy, for sure. Zacchaeus likely went to the synagogue on, on Sabbath uh, and all of these things. So he was actually a religious guy to begin with. He was very rich, and he desperately wanted to see God. He wanted to experience God. He wanted to encounter God. And when I think of our church and I think of the things we're walking through, I think that describes us pretty well. For the most part, we have been resort. We have resources. We have money. We have possessions. We're not. We're not. Uh, we're not. We're not struggling to put food on the table. And we're. You know, North Americans are generally pretty religious. A lot of us go to church on Sunday. Call ourselves Christians. This is Zacchaeus. And yet, and yet, in all of those circumstances, and however good it might seem on the outside, Zacchaeus is not connecting with Jesus meaningfully. And this is. This is, a bit of an, this is a bit of an issue, and I think it actually describes the North American church. And so, rather than letting obstacles get in his way, and there are obstacles between Zacchaeus and his God encounter, Zacchaeus is going to look for a sycamore tree or a tool, you could say, to get him to a place where he can actually see Jesus and encounter God. And what I'm going to show you at the end of this at the end of this talk, is that sycamore tree. I think you need a sycamore tree. You and I need sycamore trees at times in our lives to actually connect with Jesus. So the story goes on. When Jesus got to the tree, you know, isn't this an awesome story? I mean, like climbing trees as an adult. I think that's such a cool idea. And Zacchaeus is up in a tree. He's climbed a tree. He's a tree climber. And it says, Jesus got to the tree, and he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, hurry down. Today is my day to be a guest in your home. I love that. It's not, it's not Jesus going to come out to the sycamore tree and say, Hey, Jack, Zacchaeus, this is your big day. I'm inviting you to church today. No. And some of us think that the only place where Jesus can encounter us is in church on Sunday. Oh, my goodness. That's not what's, that's not what's happening here. Actually, there's a movement towards Zacchaeus' home. And so... <clears throat> He says, he says to Zacchaeus, get down. I'm actually coming into your home today. So Zacchaeus scrambled out of the tree, hardly believing his good luck, delighted to take Jesus home with him. Isn't that a provocative phrase? Whoops. To take Jesus home with him. Everyone who saw the incident was indignant and grumped about it. What business does he have getting cozy with this crook? Man, that tells you something about Jesus. He wasn't just after those, he wasn't just after hanging out with people that are nice people and got all their stuff together. He was, he was truly the friend of sinners, and he was unafraid to touch people and hug people and get into their lives in spite of their brokenness, in spite of their fear, in spite of their dysfunction. That's a beautiful thing. Zacchaeus stood there, a little stunned, says he stammered apologetically, Master, I give away, I, I'm gonna give away half of my income to the poor, and if I'm caught cheating, I'm going to pay four times the damages. And Jesus said these words, Today is salvation day in this home. Here is Zacchaeus, son of Abraham. For the son of man came to find, find and restore the lost. So from a wide angle view, there's a few things going on here. One is Zacchaeus is wealthy. He has it all. He's religious, but he's not connecting with God. That's a picture of the North American church, I think. The second thing here is Jesus has an intention here of taking, of coming into Zacchaeus' home. 
I think that is incredibly profound here. This isn't about getting Zacchaeus to come to church. This is about Jesus moving into his space, the most intimate space, his home. So it's pretty cool that that's where you're sitting right now as you listen to this live feed. I've, I, I've said this in other um, places, but I actually think that one of the things that God is doing in this season is, is something around bringing the kingdom of God and bringing the presence of Jesus into your home. You can call that a house church movement or whatever you, call, whatever you think. I'll be talking about that more further. Does that mean the main gathering is over and done? No, 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 no. It doesn't mean that at all. It doesn't mean we're never going to come back into this space and, jam- and pack, it to the, pack it to the rafters and make some noise. I do, that's not what I'm saying. But there is definitely in this season, I believe, a movement to the house. And fixing a disconnect between what happens in here and what happens in your home. And we're going to start fixing that today. And I'm excited about the gathering being in your house today. It's very cool. So... Here we are, kind of, we've got this story, and, and Jesus is moving into Zacchaeus' space. That's where this is going, and we can, we, can, we can just kind of imagine what that looked like when Jesus actually hangs out in Zacchaeus' home, but it would have been an intimate fellowship. It would have been an encounter. I would imagine there was a friendship that started from that day forward. Um, Jesus, when he gets into your life, he doesn't let go. He doesn't just move on. And so it's a really, really beautiful picture I wanted to just zoom in, though, tight shot on that tree. And you are right now in a season where your opportunity, I I want you to hear me, church. You have an opportunity right now to connect with Jesus, to connect with the God of the universe, unlike any other. For some obvious reasons, one of them is a lot of us are stuck at home, we're in self-isolation, maybe you're under quarantine, and, or, or maybe you've lost your job. This is happening every day in Fort St. John at, a, at an alarming rate. And suddenly, just like that, you find yourself at some margin. I have felt for a long time, and one of my frustrations with our church and with life in Fort St. John is that you, just, you and I just don't have margin. We have no margin in our lives and no space for God to move in. And therefore, we have all, our, we have all of our busy lives, we have our schedules, we have our entertainment things going on, and there's no space. And suddenly right now, you find yourself with space. And I'm telling you, this is your opportunity to actually move deeper in your, in your walk with God. This is your opportunity to actually practice some of the things we've been talking about, conversational intimacy with Jesus and walking this out in reality and spirit and in truth. This is your opportunity. You might need a tree, and I want to give you a tree. And the tree is a really simple practice that we, that we do in our church all the time, and many of you will know exactly where I'm going with this, this isn't our invention. We, we receive this as part, of our, as part of our journey with church renewal. And it's called STAR. We just call it STAR. And it's a really simple way of connecting with God. And if you're in the midst of dealing with panic and all, and all kinds of fear, you just can't sleep at night, this is going to help you too. So STAR is an acronym that stands for four, that stands for four, four things. First is, and I'm going to roll the first two together, STOP and then take a deep breath. It's not what you expected, probably. (laughs) You're thinking, what's he talking about here? That doesn't sound too spiritual. Stop and take a deep breath. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge, huge, huge. And and there are a lot of really good reasons to actually practice this and just to stop and to start breathing. Just breathe deeply. In fact, they say that, that it's the cortisone levels that rise up in your system which cause irrational fear, anxiety, and all of these things. And when you learn to stop and just breathe, like I'm talking a real practical stop, and then take some deep breaths. Some people recommend counting backwards from five. Your serotonin levels start to come up, and those are the, that's the chemical in your system that, that actually causes peace and makes you feel a little bit at rest. And so that's the, the STAR acronym, is stop and take a deep breath. And... This is actually a biblical idea as well. And one of the characters in the Bible that understood this seems better than almost anybody else was, was David. And so in the book of Psalms, we see this come up on a number of occasions. Some of you will know this verse, be still and know that I am God. I always say there's a, there's a knowing and a revelation that doesn't, you won't experience unless you stop. As long as you're going, 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 
There are places around knowledge that you'll never, ever enter into. And it's not until you stop. This is your opportunity right now. If your life has slowed down a little bit, to be still and know. And I think I want to say, most importantly, to know who God is. And so David says that there. Psalm 37, verse 7. Another verse, I love this. Be still and wait patiently for the Lord. Isn't that good? Be still and wait patiently for the Lord. Or Psalm 131, verse 2 says, I have calmed and quieted my soul within me like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. And that's a beautiful picture of what it looks like. I think a, a child resting with its mother what we're talking about here. And so this is your, I'm, I'm telling you, this is your, this, I think this is your sycamore tree this week. I, I would love to see you practice star multiple times a day where you stop, you just stop. Whatever's going on, um, you, maybe you just got some bad news or, or you've just watched something on the news that just causes your blood pressure to shoot up. Or maybe you're thinking about the future and man, oof. I would say Jesus' words in Matthew 5 are really good for us right now. Don't worry about tomorrow because today has enough fear for itself. But I want to encourage you in that moment just to stop, take a deep breath, and you're starting to climb up your sycamore tree. That's what this is about. A stands for appreciate. And can I just say that your weapon against all the um, depression and Things that, that are, are just are maybe maybe feel like you're you feel like you're clawing to fight against. One of your major weapons is gratitude, and wherever you're at and whatever your your status is in life or whatever's going on in your life, I just want to say right now, in this moment, however bad it is, there is something to be grateful for. Push into gratitude. So you're going to stop. You're going to take a deep breath. As you do that, stuff is going to go on in your, in your body. Chemical balances are going to shift. Cortisone is going to plummet. Serotonin is going to go up. You're going to start to feel peace, and then you're going to push in to appreciate. That's, the, that's appreciate or gratitude. I love the way Philippians 4 puts it. And, and, and Philippians 4 was, was written, I think, to those who are in anxiety and were praying about stuff. And it says, it says in verse 6, for verse 6 to 9, and I'm pulling out pieces of it, says, don't be anxious about anything. So obviously, the writer of Philippians is talking to people that are anxious. But he says, in everything, by prayers and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. So there it is. We're praying about stuff. We're going to do that tonight at 5 o'clock as a, as a church, as we gather, gather digitally, virtually for a prayer summit. Is we're going to pray about things. But I think the, the writer, his advice is brilliant. It's, it's on par with genius. He's saying, even as you're praying about things that you're anxious about, financial situations, our medical situation, um, whether, you're, whether you're now currently infected with corona, and I just want to say that, that prayer is not just for after you're sick. I think it actually can be a good preventative option as well. He's saying this. He's saying, whatever you're praying, pray it with gratitude, and then the promise is astounding. Then the peace of God, which passes all understanding, the peace of God, which makes no sense on a practical level. It just doesn't make any sense, right? Come on, church. I'm talking to you. This is your chance to shine like a city on a hill. There's going to be a lot, of, a lot of fear and a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety around you. And you have an opportunity to, to walk in peace that makes no sense because you, you are focused and connected with Jesus, the God of the universe. And um, so stop. Take a deep breath. Go into gratitude. And you're going to have a chance to, to do that even today in your home. Go into gratitude. And then R stands for respond. So stop, take a deep breath, push into gratitude, and respond. In other words, this is how it works. Once you have walked through this, I love the way Psalm 100 puts it. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. In other words, there's a way to get into God's presence. There's a way to get into living in the kingdom peace and joy, all those things that the kingdom stands for. And it is through gratitude. So now, as you've, as you've stopped, you've, you've taken a deep breath. And again, you're going to practice this multiple times. Some of you are going to need to be practicing it right now. And then you, you go into gratitude and you just think of something that you're grateful for. And there's always something, man. Move into it. Push in deeply into it. We always say this. Think of something you're grateful for. And then think of a time when you were 
an actual moment in time, a memory that you have where you were incredibly grateful for that thing and then turned it into a prayer of thanksgiving to God. According to Psalm 100, now you're in the presence of God and that is a good place to be and it's a good place to now respond. Responding could be an, uh, taking an action that you need to take at that point. Maybe there is something you need to do. Maybe you need to drop something on your schedule. Maybe you need to push into something that you've been putting off. But at this point, you can respond. We always say one of the best things, one of the best, best ways to respond at this point, after you've stopped and you've taken a deep breath and you've moved into gratitude, one of the best ways to respond at this point is to say, okay, Jesus, is there anything you want to say to me at this point? And then listen. Listen to those thoughts that kind of start jogging around in your heart. And, and I tell you, it's very likely that those could be God thoughts. Write them down on paper. What a, what a cool thing, right? This is your tree. This is your, this is your sycamore tree. And it will help you in this season where you have the best, biggest opportunity of your life to connect with God. It's right now. It's in the season. And I want to encourage you to go there. There's another story in the book of Luke that t- tells about Jesus coming to somebody's home. And it's Luke chapter 10. The tail end of this chapter, I, I love it when Jesus shows up in, in your house. And I think you should be expecting that to happen even this morning. And Luke 10 records another story of Jesus coming to somebody's home. And it's, uh, it's two ladies, Mar- Mary and Martha. And he's coming over for dinner. Isn't that cool? And he comes into their home and, and it says, it says the story, you can read it for yourself, but in it, what's happening here is Martha, the older sister, is busy, busy, busy making a meal for Jesus. And of course, I, I can see myself being there. I'd be pretty stressed if God was coming over for dinner. I'd be doing my darndest to make sure it was a great meal, and that's Martha, and she's busy, 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 busy. And you can kind of, you're kind of reading between the lines. Jesus seems like he might have came into the living room space, and he sat down on the couch. And Mar- Martha's sister, Mary, <clears throat> does this. She goes, and she sits at the feet of Jesus, and she just hangs out with him and just, and just connects to him and listens to what he's saying and They have a conversation. It's a really beautiful picture. While Martha is, it says, worried and anxious about many things. And so she's freaking out doing all this stuff and she's getting stressed and she's she's getting busy. Watch Watch out in this season that you don't just fill up all your space with noise. You know, fill up all your margin with more. With, uh, there's nothing wrong with Netflix, but media, 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 Netflix, 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 or just doing nothing. Don't, don't, just watch out for that. This is your opportunity, remember, to connect with Jesus. So Mary takes the opportunity. Martha's busy, and she's anxious, and she's doing all this stuff. Martha actually at one point comes to Jesus and says, can you tell my sister to get in the kitchen and get busy with me? Can you tell my sister to sort of pick up on all the stuff that I'm anxious about? And Jesus says, Martha, I can see that you're worried and anxious about many things, but one thing is necessary, and Mary has chosen the one thing that's necessary. And I want to tell you, in no uncertain terms, the one thing that's necessary is that you connect with him, that you hear his voice, and that you walk with him in this season. And so star might be your sycamore tree. I want to give you one more um, piece of uh, what I think is a really, really good way of stepping into star but I'm going to tell you this dream first. I told you I was going to tell this dream, and, and I kind of was talking with Sarah a little bit about this and thinking, Sh- should I talk this dream out? And <laughs> as, we were, as we were just sort of talking about it, I felt like, you know what? If you were all hanging out here on a Sunday morning, I would definitely tell you this dream. It was two months ago, and again, I'm not going to give you theology on dreams right now, but just look through your Bible, and you'll see that Jesus speaks, God speaks through dreams all the time. So... Here's the dream. February 1st, 2020, I had this dream on a Friday night. Scene one, it was Technicolor. Scene one, Sarah and I were living by an airport and a, and a doctor was the air traffic controller. And that's important. It was a very busy airport, like a city airport, with both commercial and recreational planes coming and going. The doctor was very busy with this as he was controlling air traffic. Suddenly, a snowstorm hits with a fury, and planes start spinning off the runway. I actually saw one plane come in for a landing but have to pull up last minute, and it does a crazy flip and actually crashes and explodes into the ground. Flames started spreading as planes were skidding off the runway. 
other planes started crashing. It was absolutely pure mayhem in this dream. I noticed at that point that houses that were surrounding the airport were starting to catch fire. And there was a fire spreading kind of like through grass, but it was hitting houses. In fact, I saw a few houses as I was sort of positioned in the airport. I saw a few houses that were gutted right out as flame had roared through these, this, this neighborhood surrounding the airport. That's scene one. Scene two, I realized that we, Sarah and I need to get to our house because this fire is spreading and we want to make sure that our house is not in danger, right? So we rushed over to our house. At this point, our house is kind of like on the edge of a green space, on the edge of a forest. And um, we get there, relieved to see that the house has not caught fire, but the fire is coming. We can see it racing through the grass and through homes. Everyone, I wrote this down. I'm reading right off of a journal entry from February 1st. Everyone is largely unconcerned at this point, even though there's a crazy fire going on. Most people, I put here, are carrying on with business as usual. That's when the fire hits our home. It's, it's spread through the grass and trees. Miraculously, it only burns outbuildings and attachments to the house. Like we had a sunroom, it burns the sunroom down, but it doesn't actually hit the house at all. To which I believe in the dream that that's a miracle. I, you know, I'm thanking God for a miracle. But as I'm thinking this, I'm now inside the house, I see an ember must have hit the roof and burned right through the shingles and the rafters into the, into the ceiling of the house. And I know this must be the end. So I start thinking of what I should be taking out of the house. I have a little panic moment right there. Some of you are having panic moments right now in the midst of this season. And um, in my mind is panicking. Remember in panic, you don't think straight. So if my mind is panicking. I have a hard time thinking of what I should be taking. What's important? Question mark, question mark, question mark in my journal. In that frame of, in that, in, in, at that frame of mind, I actually go and grab a TV, you know, like, I can't think of what's important. So in my dream, I grab, I grab a TV, it's covered in ashes, and I'm packing this, you know, our widescreen TV out of the house, which is the, not the important thing here. Um, I don't know if there's something in that for you, but your TV is not the most important thing in this season. In that frame of mind, a lady suddenly says, we can save this house. And we start together with this lady and a couple others, we start dismantling the area in the ceiling that's burning. And the only way I can describe it, it was like taking apart Legos or something. It was really easy and we just tossed away the burning pieces. And suddenly all fire is gone from the house. There's no danger, <clears throat> but we have this open area in the ceiling, quite a large open area, about three quarters of the ceiling, is, uh, the roof is gone, just a gaping hole. Scene three, I'm with an insurance adjuster and he's using a computer. We're sitting at the table in this house. He's using a computer to calculate the funds we'll receive for restoring the house. He says, make sure you tell me everything you need and want. That want is important. So I tell him what we'll, struct we'll structurally need to replace the roof, obviously. And um, he says, are you sure that's it? And I say, yeah, well, that, that will take care of it. And he estimates about hundred k, hundred thousand dollars will pay for that. He asks, this is important. He says, is there anything else you need? And I say, I look into his eyes and I say, well, I think that's it. He goes, okay, I'm going to press send. He's got a computer. He's going to press send to the insur insurance company. And he presses send. As the email is going off and you hear the little ding in my dream, I go, wait a sec. I didn't think about contents. I just thought about structure stuff. My heart sinks because I think I might have lost my opportunity to get some funds for contents. So I say this to the insurance adjuster and with a wink and a smile, he says, it's okay, I'll take care of it. So he goes to work on his computer adjusting. He says, name anything you want. And so I start with, well, the kitchen's kind of, you know, been a little bit damaged from smoke damage. How about a new kitchen? Sure. He says, yep, it's in there. We take care of that. And then I go, well, there's possibly some of our computers aren't working as good anymore because of smoke damage. He goes, okay, what do you need? And I name off a bunch of Mac computers <laughs> in the dream. And he goes, is there anything else? And at this point in the dream, I'm thinking really big. And I actually go, we could use a grand piano. I'm not kidding. This is what I said in the dream. And I know we don't have a grand piano and we're not replacing one. But he just goes, yep, we can take care of that. And um, by the time we were done having the, this discussion, we had completely re remodeled the whole house pretty much. The upstairs was completely way more open concept and design. And the tragedy begins to look like a triumph. That's really important. The tragedy is beginning to look like something 
really, really good. And so I, I got up the next morning, and this is what we always do. When That's what I do. If, if I feel like a dream is important, I'll just do some prayer around it. So I got up, and I, I, sat, I told Sarah the dream. She says, you should do some listening. And, and so I sat down with my journal said, okay, I will. And so I just, in my journal, I said, Jesus, is there anything you want to say to me about this dream? And he says this. Remember, this is two months ago. He goes, well, for one, the doctor is at the heart of something big. I'm reading right out of my journal. And the stakes are high, higher than you know. Now think about my passion for people to experience healing and how the physical world often mirrors what's happening in the spiritual realm. What if I told you a great story of redemption is going to unfold in this city that mirrors the best transformation stories you've ever heard about in other places? And the hospital is one of the keys. And picture the story five years down the road. And I was picturing a very redemptive, happy ending story around this whole crisis. And I say, so I say, and this is often how I have conversation with God in my journal. I say, and the hospital's the epicenter? And he says, yes, yes, it's definitely the epicenter. I say, okay, is there anything else? And this is what I felt he was saying. He says, your house is evangel. So remember the house, caught fire, and fire moved in. He goes, your house is evangel in the midst of all this. I will prosper this house. I want you to ask. I want you to ask, man. This is an invitation to prayer right now. I want you to ask, what do you need? What do you want? What do you want? What are your dreams? And you are doing this. So he was affirming. You are doing this. And I, the insurance adjuster and insurance provider, will take care of the rest. And the latter will be greater than the former. And then he took me to a verse. To sense this verse coming to my mind, Haggai chapter 2, verse 9, which says, The latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. I think, I just want to say this, I think we are living in crazy, crazy days, and I think God is going to do something crazy, crazy good in the midst of all these circumstances. So, I want to remind you, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to take seriously this idea of connecting with God. You might be like Zacchaeus, you probably are, and you need a tree. Use star. Stop. Take a deep breath. Go to gratitude. And then in that place, respond. I want to give you one more, I want to give you one more tool that will actually will help you with this as well. And we're going to put it up on the screen. It's called the One Minute Pause. Now, John Eldridge, one of my favorite authors, just wrote a book called Get Your Life Back. And I think the, the, coming, the timing of this book being published just a couple months ago is a, probably a God thing. With the book, he actually put out an app called the One Minute Pause. And the One Minute Pause is essentially Star, but it's an app that can be on your phone and will lead you simply. It, can, it will actually notify you a couple times a day. I have mine set for 10 o'clock in the morning and 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And at both those times, my phone will zip up and go, it's time for the One Minute Pause push play and it's my chance to go into star at 10 o'clock and then two o'clock pops up it's my chance to go in at two o'clock too this is gonna this is gonna be a season man to connect with jesus this is your season this is your time now and we don't want to waste one second of it so you can get that app it'll help you walk into star okay here's what's going to happen now we're gonna you have had an opportunity i hope to get a look at the church the Church Without Walls Guide, and in it are some, it's a, it's a PDF, there's some JPEGs, you can find them on the Facebook page or on our website. If, if you can't find them, you can text the number 250-785-3386 and we'll send it to you. Now this guide just will lead you through a bit of a gathering. We've only been together now for about 35, 40 minutes, where are we at here? 44 minutes. So you have some time, I'd encourage you to, to spend some time singing together. That's going to feel a little bit awkward. I, I know this isn't normal for a lot of us. But try it. Just kind of push in. And then some discussion around what I just talked about. What jumped out at you? You can do some discussion. Bring your kids into this conversation. This will be so, so good. And then close your time with prayer. When all that's done, congrats. You just had a Sunday morning gathering in your house. I would recommend moving from there into bacon and eggs and toast and pancakes, French toast, things like that, of that nature. And just enjoy this day. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let's rejoice and be glad in it. 
So, I'm going to close in prayer, and we're going to sign off, and I hope you have an amazing day. Remember, keep looking at, keep tagging into the Evangel Facebook page, the YouTube channel. We're going to be throwing stuff up there regularly throughout the week, this week coming, and uh, we're going to stay connected as a house through this. So, God, I thank you for the season we're in. God, thank you for the opportunities that are in front of us. Even in the midst of great turmoil on the, in the planet, I can't help but think, I've thought this so many times, that comfort is often the place where we don't flourish as followers of Jesus. You know, when things are just comfortable and predictable. But we see continually through scriptures and through history that when things are more difficult and all of a sudden comforts are taken away, predictability is gone that that is the time when we push in deeper. And I think that's the opportunity for us as a house right now. That's the opportunity for the church. That's the opportunity for humanity is to hit the reset button in this season and to actually come through like that dream was kind of pointing to and say, actually, the latter is greater than the former. I actually fully believe that in Fort St. John, not, not just in the church, in the city of Fort St. John and around the globe, there's a big reset button being pushed. And we're all going to say after it's all done, hey, this is actually better than what we started with in the beginning. That's the hope. That's the hope we have in Jesus. That's the hope we have in a God who works beautiful things out of messes and chaos. So we just want to tell you, Jesus, that we put our faith and hope and trust in you. And we pray, I pray that this would be a week of going places in our walk with you, in our relationship with you, that we've never gone before. So I pray that, God. I speak blessing and life over the house. We speak blessing and life over our city, and we pray blessing and life over the world around us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, I hope to see you at 5. We'll be on live at 5 for Prayer Summit. Tag in a few minutes early just so you can get that feed working, and uh, that'll be good. So have an awesome, have an awesome morning and afternoon. We'll talk to you soon.